Fueled by DeathCast. This is the big announcement. Is the movies that made us. I'm so excited for this because it's, you know, that same model, that same level of passion and creativity behind it, but now from the movie side. And for, you know, uh, my listeners and viewers who might not know and might not have heard about it, season one is going to include Die Hard, Ghostbusters, Dirty Dancing, and Home Alone. I got to ask, how did you whittle down the plethora <laughs> of movies to come up with the, those four to, to kick off this show? So we knew it was going to be a holiday release. So, you know, people are like, Brian, you don't shut up about RoboCop. Why didn't you do RoboCop? Exactly. Yeah. No, believe me. <laughs> believe me, it's painful that we didn't do RoboCop. But um, Home Alone is holidays. Die Hard is holidays. I did Ghostbusters because it was comedy, quote unquote, horror, and also act like it just it, it it felt right for what the others we were doing. And for me, Dirty Dancing was always a holiday movie too, because when I was growing up, I was a part of this big group of people and every like New Year's and Christmas, when the parents were like getting drunk, we would like be sitting there watching the dudes would watch Star Wars, the girls would watch Dirty Dancing. So and not separately, like we'd watch one first, then the other uh, for years. I mean, probably between me being 10 and 18, every Christmas, every New Year's, those were the two movies we were watching. So that's why I chose Dirty Dancing. I totally agree. Same kind of thing. Um, growing up, especially around Thanksgiving time, um, Dirty Dancing was not all always on either television or on VHS, but it was one of my mother's favorite soundtracks. So when we would be driving to the grandparents for Christmas or for Thanksgiving or something like that, it would we'd be listening to that and then subsequently watch the movie usually later that day. And yeah. so it was always around the holiday too. So that makes that makes a ton of sense. Did you attack this show with the was is it the same crew from Toys doing movies? Almost the exact same team. Robin Henry was a uh, producer on seasons one and two, uh, and she was the showrunner for season three. So stuff like that. Ben Frost, uh, who edited seasons one and two, he edited seasons th season three. So same with Nick. So I'd say 90% of the team came back. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, all the stuff that we've talked about through the different seasons of Toys is it's always about how surprising a lot of it is, either the people that you're meeting or the information. Like, the, like one of my favorite stories is when you guys went over and met everybody that literally created Transformers and were bringing out binders of things to show you guys and just, like, how mind-blowing it was to be in that room with all of this stuff. It, did you get that same feeling on making movies? Because I, and I only say that because you know some of these movies are the most iconic movies in the world. You said it earlier, like the one guy just has been talking about Die Hard for forty freaking years. Like, is there? Are you still finding new stuff? And is it still surprising? Oh, dude, we found tons of new stuff. I mean, it. I mean, I'll give you a great. I'll give you two different examples. So, Home Alone. Mm -hmm. I've known. For a long time, that Home Alone was quote unquote shot in a school. I you read that, you're like I was shot in a school. Right. You don't really think about it. So then we go to the school, and we're in the school, and we brought the old line producer back. And for example, we went into the swimming pool area of the school, mm -hmm. and he's like. Yeah, yeah. You see that pool? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's where we shot. We That's where we built the basement set. You know, when Kevin is in the basement and the fireplace yeah. is like, uh, we built that in the pool. What? And you're sitting there. So like I said, my whole life I had heard they shot it in a school and I just never really put two and two together. But now I'm sitting here looking at a pool that's in use. The school's still being used. And you're like, that's where Kevin was talking to the fireplace. So there were a lot of great, and you're like, well, you know, why there? Like the gymnasium is where the house was built. Like they literally rebuilt, they built the entire first and second stories in the gym. Wow. And 
be using graphics and stuff. We, we, you know, like we did sort of in the Lego episode, we're able to uh, juxtapose the set into the pool, juxtapose the, right. the, 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 the set into the gym. So you could really see how crazy this was that they shot. A, it was literally summer break. The school wasn't being used. And John Hughes was like, why don't we just shoot it in a school? <laughs> so, so it was stuff like that. So that was one thing. Yeah, I'm actually going to tell you three stories. If you don't mind. Um, the other one is um, with uh, with Die Hard. Um, the and you know it's funny, man. Uh, I could actually it's in my other. You know it's funny. Watch this. The, the modern technology. Watch this. <laughs> so let's see here. So do you see this? Sinatra? <laughs> Frank Sinatra is Die Hard. So you see that? Yeah, I do. So. That's the that's the actual poster that sold the show. So after season, uh, well, after season two did well, mm -hmm. uh, Netflix asked me to come in and pitch other ideas. So I pitched two ideas. The other one didn't go so far, um, but that's the poster that sold the show. And you're based on your reaction. You don't know why. You know why the fuck is Sinatra? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So a lot of people don't know this, and it's again back to your question: What did we learn? And that stuff. Yeah. Die Hard is a sequel to a movie that came out in the '70s that starred Sinatra, really? and Sinatra had the rights to play John McClane. What? So they had to offer it to him. He did say yes. And then he was like, yeah, you know what? I'm 74. Maybe I shouldn't be jumping through windows. And that him passing is what ultimately, of course, led to Bruce Willis. Wow. But that's the poster that got the show, show sold. And it's like little facts like that, that some people know that, some people don't. I'd say only 1% of diehard fans probably know that. Um, by the way, the original movie, the first one, that Die Hard's a sequel to uh, is literally like the die like it's literally like Sinatra saw Death Wish and was like <laughs> I said to his that. agent, "You see what Bronson's doing? I want to do that." Oh my God. And that's what it is. It's this crazy, dark, violent, violent, violent movie in the original book that Die Hard's based on. Um, it's his daughter that he's trying to rescue. And she gets killed at the end. She's the, she literally falls off the roof of the building. So the way Hans Gruber falls off, his daughter is the one who falls off. Like it's, and his wife I think gets killed too. Like oh it's my like gosh. the most violent, horrible thing ever. So that was on the Die Hard thing where it was just, you know, we flew all over the country interviewing all these people. 